ladies and gentlemen, salam alaikum, and welcome to the world of limitless connectivity. So today I'm going to talk to you about um, how we see the world of limitless connectivity, and in particular, how that's going to change the enterprises that we've been working with for the last 100 years as part of Industry 4.0. We all live deeply connected lives. We wake up using the alarm clock on our smartphone. We use the smartphone to check our WhatsApp, send messages, send emails. We use the smartphone to check the weather forecast, to order our taxi to work, to order our lunch, and if we go to the gym, we use the smartphone to check our heart rate or our wearables. We use the smartphone to make reservations for dinner, to pay for dinner, to watch your Netflix in the evening, to book your holiday, and perhaps not even stay in a hotel, but stay in an Airbnb. Our entire lives revolves around the smartphones and the wearables. And in the last 20 years, this is exactly what we've done to ourselves. But there are very few people who are still enjoying this capability. So what's going to come next? The next phase is going to be how do we extend this to the rest of those who don't have it. But more importantly, there are going to be not just billions of phones and devices as we have, but trillions of devices, trillions of sensors that are going to be embedded in everything that we do, from equipment at home, even in our bodies, our clothes, anything that you can imagine is going to have a sensor in it. And you will need a connectivity platform, an infrastructure platform, to enable you to connect all of these together and to make sense of it. That's what the future is going to look like. But before I say a little bit more about that, let's talk about how we got here. So in the beginning was 1G, and now we're moving towards 5G. But in the successive generations of mobile technology we've had, we've gone from paper maps to Google Maps, from classified ads or yellow pages to Google Ads, we've gone from CDs to Spotify and to iTunes. We've gone from DVDs to, net, to Netflix and YouTube. We've gone from taxis to Uber. We've gone from hotels to Airbnb. In the last one generation, in less than 20 years, we have transformed book buying and the entire entertainment industry. The largest bookstore in the world is a digital company, Amazon. The largest music distributor in the world are digital companies, Spotify and iTunes. The largest film distributors are digital companies, Netflix, and YouTube. The largest taxi company in the world is Uber and Kareem. In one generation, in 20 years, we've transformed all of these industries. But all of these industries have got one characteristic in common. They've got digitizable products. Their products can be converted into digital. The CD is converted into a piece of software that you can listen to, right? Now the hard task begins. What about the things that we cannot convert into digital forms? That's what the next stage is. So in the next world, we're going to be looking at merging of the physical and the virtual worlds. That's one thing that we're going to see. And we're going to be transforming what we call the asset-heavy industries, construction, manufacturing, smart grids, healthcare, 
oil and gas, mining. So we are not stopping at the transformation of asset light industries. We are moving towards the transformation of the remaining asset heavy industry. And the technology that allows us to do that is 5G. So what will 5G do for us? First, let's talk about the merger of the physical and the virtual worlds. What 5G allows us to do is to create immersive experiences and allow us to create digital overlays of our experiences onto the physical world. So in a consumer world, what does that mean? It means that we can have an immersive experience like this guy here with his dog. Even though the dog is not physically present, they have a 6G hologram and can have an interaction with that dog without necessarily physically being in the same place with that dog. It also means that if we extend it to humans, you can have conversations with your family and with members of your family around the world, not through the screen, but almost having a kind of a, an immersive sensory relationship with them. Another example is events. In 2021, we had the Olympic Games. And Japan was still in lockdown. The Olympic Games were revived in the early 1900s. And in that time, we started broadcasting it on radio, broadcast it on TV. And very much, that's been the way we've experienced most of us, other than going to the Games, have experienced it. Last year, there were no spectators at the Olympic Games. And yet, it went ahead. We saw the glimpse of how we might experience those games. This year in this region, we will have the World Cup. If there is another lockdown, there might be no spectators. So what 5G will enable us to do is to experience those games without necessarily being there. We'll have that immersive experience of being in the stadium with the smell, with the taste, and feeling the crowd as if you were physically there using the technology that we have. You can go to the concerts of your choice without necessarily being at the concert. You could see Lady Gaga without necessarily traveling to her concert. And that whole experience is going to be made possible with the extra bandwidth, the additional high bandwidth, and the latency that we get from 5G. The third thing from a consumer perspective is going to be what we call the hybrid shopping. Lockdown meant we couldn't go to the shops. And many of us stayed at home. We browsed the internet and we ordered things. But sometimes you want to feel what you're ordering, right? And sometimes you actually want to buy it in the physical shop. So you're going to get this hybrid situation where you're able not just to browse it, but actually even try it on without physically being in the shop, if it's, a if it's an item of clothing. And that combination of the physical and the hybrid is going to be an important part of how we shop and, re and we do retail. Many of us do this today. We look at the prices on the internet, and then we go to the shop and we buy it. But sometimes, by the time you get it, it's not exactly what you're looking for. So you can put your measurements in, and you can try the clothes on, and then you can go to the shop and actually order it. So this is what we mean by the immersive, multi-sensory experience that 5G is going to enable as we move forward. So what about for industries? For industries, we're going to use the same technology of having the ability to create that digital overlay on a physical environment. When Henry Ford created his first automobile, the Ford Model T, it was an engineering task. It had internal combustion engine, it had wheels, it had leather seats, 
it was very much a mechanical engineering product. Today, Tesla is a computer. It's not a mechanical engineered product. It's got hardware with chipsets. It's got software. It is then connected to the cloud. What does that mean? That means that you can build the car digitally. You don't build the car physically, but you build it digitally with a whole bunch of people using the collaborative tools that you have. That you, you don't have to be in the same place. And once you design the vehicle, that design is then taken to a, uh, uh, the plant, and then it's manufactured. Or it could be 3D printed. Again, that's part of what 5G enables you to do. So you have the real-time collaboration to design the vehicle and then to produce the vehicle physically. So we are on the cusp of digitalizing the whole environment. If you look at the digital truck car that Ford created and what Elon Musk is creating, Elon Musk is creating an electronic digital product, whereas Ford created a physical product. And that's a completely different. And what's more important, you don't have to take your car into the garage to get it fixed. If it needs a software update, it's delivered over the cloud onto the moving vehicle. If it needs a bug fix, if it's delivered over the car onto the vehicle. And it needs to be able to do that in real time and to deliver very, very high data um, at very high data rates in order that you are able to correct and fix the product. Today, if you have a problem with the car, what happens? There's a car, there's a recall. How much does that cost you as a manufacturer to recall all of those vehicles and get them fixed? As we move forward, you don't have to recall those vehicles. Just as you do on your laptops or on your smartphone, a fix is delivered onto the vehicle as the vehicle is with you. And so we are completely changing the paradigm of manufacturing from a mechanical engineered product into an ICT product. The vehicle is essentially a computer. And in the case of Tesla, by the way, it could also be a satellite receiver as well to be able to get a satellite signal for all your entertainment. You're basically driving a computer and not a vehicle. In factories, and I'll show you a video of a factory in a minute, we have a, smart, a 5G factory that manufactures our 5G products in the US. All of the equipment are connected by 5G, and the entire factory floor is filled with automated guided vehicles, robots, and um, AR, VR equipment this factory was built during the lockdown, so we, did, we weren't able to send people into the factory. So effectively, we designed the factory electronically in the cloud, and then we physically delivered the factory as a physical factory. And then, of course, in the end, this is an example of the merging of the physical, so you can see exactly what you're trying to do digitally but then you render it physically. So the Industrial Revolution we started in the 6th, 17th and 18th century, that required you to build physical things on presence, is completely being transformed into a digital design and then a physical rendition as we move forward. So let's run, let's run the tape. Oh, sorry, not that. Now this applies not only to factories, it applies to airports, transforming the way the entire process of baggage handling and the preparation for takeoff and landing is handled. In mining, mining is one of the most dangerous jobs in the world. There are so many people that die going to the mines and never come back. What this technology allows you to do is to be able to have high precision automated guided vehicles that do the mining without the miners actually going into the mines themselves. We save lives, 
it's cheaper, and it's much more productive. Then ports. Largest cost in the ports is how long the ship stays in the port. What you really want to do in this business is to be able to turn the ship around really very quickly. The business of offloading and unloading cargo is very manually um, intensive. And again, 5G can be used to transform that entire process. Same with offshore and uh, onshore processes. And then with electric utilities, which you need to be able to create the um, reliable infrastructure that um, a country like um, uh, the Saudi Arabia needs. And this is not just me talking. These are examples of companies that are already doing this. So Deutsche Telekom is working with BMW to change the entire production of BMW cars. You've got British Telecom transforming Belfast Harbour and making it an automated harbour. You've got Vodafone working with a utility company in the UK called Centrica. Telefonica working with um, Mercedes-Benz, with ourselves, in building the automated factory that I talked about earlier. So this stuff is happening right now. But now let me show you an example of what we in Ericsson have done to ourselves. Sound? So this is our 5G factory. It's a physical factory that was designed digitally. It's in Louisville, Texas, and it produces Ericsson's 5G products. It is 100% powered by solar. And as you can see, these are the automated robots that run the fire. You will not see any human beings in there. And a lot of collaboration that goes on across the factory. We have multiple factories for manufacturing our products. One in Estonia, one in the US. The one in the US is about two and a half times more productive than the one in Estonia. We use 24% less energy, 60% less um, reduction in material handling, 75% less water, and it's actually been selected by the, by the World Economic Forum as one of seven lighthouse factories, i.e. factories of the future in the world. So it's an example of something that shows that this can be done. We've done it to ourselves, and you can do it to yourselves too. So as you can see there, the achieved results are two and a half, 2.2 times more productive, 75, 65% reduction in material handling, it's 24% more, more energy efficient, and 25% less indoor water usage. An example from Ericsson. Why have we achieved these excellent results? We've achieved these excellent results for three reasons. Simplified communications, flexible operations, and increased productivity. I'll start with simplified communications. In any typical environment, and you can see this in your workplace, you may have a satellite communications system. You would have fiber or ethernet, a fixed ethernet. You would have your mobile cellular network. You may have a proprietary industrial network. Or you may have a fixed voice network as well. So in the typical environment, you have about five different communications networks. Five different packages that you're paying for. Why do you need that? Because they all have different levels of resilience and capability. And what 5G does is to replace all of these with one network. And just think about the savings that you're likely to get from replacing all these multiplicities of networks with just a single network. That's the first point. The second point is you have a wire. You saw the video. There were no wires. Lots of robots roaming around. First of all, it's safe. You save cabling costs. In our factory, we save $60,000 of cabling costs, which may not be a lot to you, but for a factory, that's still quite a lot of money. Um, as I said, you can operate things remotely. We use the digital twin, which is creating the digital overlay of the factory. 
and doing everything digitally, tuning it before you bring it into the digital environment, which means the level of rework is reduced. You have flexible operations. And then finally, increased productivity is the use of robots, automated guided vehicles, and digital tracking, which means that you can have a factory that runs 24 by 7. But think about this. Communication is extremely important to this because if you have a robot or an automatic guided vehicle and the connection drops, it will stop. The entire production system will come to an end. And that's why a lot of people ask me questions. Why can't we use Wi-Fi? Of course you can use Wi-Fi. Or why can't you use ordinary cellular network? Of course you can. But if you've got a highly critical production process and the connection drops, all of your process, all of your robots stop. All of your automatic guided vehicles stop. And what does that mean? Your factory shuts down. Hence why 5G built for this type of environment is the right type of communications infrastructure for this. What does that mean for the kingdom? According to McKinsey, by 2030, um, um, GDP growth through transformation and uh, digital transformation can contribute a significant amount to the total GDP of the, of, um, of the kingdom. One of the key areas that will benefit, as I said, area is mining. We don't have to send people into those mines. We can do it digitally. The other one is manufacturing, and we've talked about manufacturing, and we know the benefits of manufacturing. Retail, Saudi Riyadh is going to be about 20 million people by 2030. Retail is going to be an important activity. And the ability to support them through a digitalized retail environment is going to be an important part of the contribution to. Then, of course, tourism, healthcare, finance, and construction. These are all part of the 2030 vision that Saudi has got, and, di and digitalization is going to play a key role in delivering the benefits that the 2030 vision promises. So, how do we make this happen? We need three things to happen. First of all, we need governments. We have a very progressive regulatory environment as far as telecom is concerned in the kingdom. Very advanced and forward thinking CITC and the government that is very keen to drive a national digital transformation agenda. And it's enabling the operators, Mobile, STC and others, to deploy one of the leading 5G networks in the world, in the kingdom. And the regulatory environment is really important. If you're going to have autonomous vehicles, for example, you need a regulatory environment on how you're going to manage, because you're not going to give traffic fines to um, autonomous vehicles, right? So if you're not going to have traffic fines, how are you going to manage? So there's a lot of regulatory work that needs to go into thinking about what does that mean for the um, economy. So government and regulatory action is an important stakeholder in how we do this. Second, I've talked about the network already. You want a reliable network. You cannot run this on the network where you have patchy coverage and calls keep dropping. You need a network that is reliable, resilient, trustworthy, secure, and highly performant to support the trillions of sensors that I started with. You're going to have trillions of sensors that have to be connected together, and you need to have a network that's capable of managing all of those network elements in a very trustworthy way, reliable way, resilient, and high performance, with extreme performance at the edge, as well as other ones. And then finally, you need the ecosystem. Our job as Ericsson, we work with our operators to build the innovation platform that connects all of these devices together, connects them, and creates a platform for innovation. But that innovation itself comes from an ecosystem of partners, industry players, device manufacturers, small startups, 
application developers, systems integrators. You need all of them to come together for this transformation to happen. I keep us saying, what use is your mobile phone if you cannot call anybody on the phone? What use is your WhatsApp if you cannot connect to anybody? What use to, is your cloud if you cannot connect to it? The single thing that connects all of these things together is communications and reliable communications. And that's what we in Ericsson provide and are working with our operators in this market to enable for Saudi Arabia. Thank you very much for listening.